Governor Nathan Deals on the line. Governor, are you there, sir? I am, Frank. Good morning. Good morning to you. How you doing? I'm good. How you like the new tag we got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank uh, When you were a uh, candidate many, many years ago, what was it? This time last year we talked, and you chuckled, my friend. You chuckled at me because I said I didn't like www.georgia.gov is a stupid idea. Bring back the peaches, and you have pulled through. I have to say thank you, I, and thanks for listening, not just me, but if anyone else brought this up. That was an awesome move on your part. You know that. Well, I think it was a, a good move, and uh, it was time. It, you know, we... We need to recycle and uh, and redo our tags, and I think the design that was selected, you know, it was done through a uh, a voter participation of folks that would uh, want to uh, vote for the tags. They were they narrowed it down to about eight designs, and um, the uh, the winning tag I think is really going to be a pretty one. It looks great. We really appreciate taking the time on. I know it's a minor thing to some, but for the rest of us, like yeah, it's kind of cool. So very good job on that. Uh, <laughs> quick question: You're you're coming down here to Valdosta. What are you are you slumming down here? What are you doing today? Well, we're visiting a lot of different places: uh, the technical college, uh, the hospital, and and just getting out and seeing what's happening in South Georgia. I know that uh, the agriculture community has suffered tremendously because of this drought. And uh, not a whole lot I can do about that, although we did uh, change the climatologist for the state of Georgia. And have you noticed it's gotten cooler since uh, we <laughs> <Saw> did that? that. <laughs> I, I've got to ask you about something. Uh, there are certain people down here that I give grief almost on a daily basis. Uh, <laughs> Amy Carter, Tim Golden, Ellis Black, for example. I keep harping about the South Georgia delegation. But now I've heard tell that one of the reasons you're down here is because they have some really cool things they want to show you. And so I need to lighten up on them a little bit for the day. Is that a fair assessment? I wish you would, yes. Uh, they, they have been uh, good members of the General Assembly, and Amy, of course, has been one of my floor leaders, and uh, she is really one of the special hosts that uh, is showing me around this part of the state today, and uh, I've just been very impressed with her abilities. She brings a lot to the table, quite honestly. As a uh, school teacher, she has helped us tremendously in dealing with what is considered to be one of the most difficult problems our state continues to face, and that is trying to improve the quality of public education. Okay, so, uh, I'll cut her a little bit of slack for you. All right, please do. All right, you know, that being said, uh, we're not going to, I know we have you for about five or six minutes while we have you on the horn. I got to play, uh, you know, you have a theme song on the show. Did you know that every time we talk about you, we play a theme song? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, fire up the theme song right now so the governor can hear it. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. But this is the theme song for Deal or No Deal, where Harry Mandel came over the stage. There's like 26 women with matching suitcases. <laughs> we play this for you all the time. I didn't. You didn't know this? <laughs> I'm afraid I did. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sonny Perdue, uh, his song was Fallout Boys. Thanks for the memory. So you've kind of trumped him with uh, this game show thing. So I think it's awesome. Just want you to know that. <laughs> well, thank you, Frank. Absolutely. Not. <laughs> I'm sorry. We never get to talk to this guy. I just wanted to throw the theme song at him. Quick, uh, serious questions here. We are. I don't know if it's a court thing or if we like having Sam Owens running around busy, but we have several challenges going on. I've got to ask you, Obamacare, we, we have this non-existent American Jobs Act plan that he says is going to get people back to work, businesses hiring again. I still feel like repealing Obamacare would be a huge step forward in that regard. This is in court right now. What is the latest with how the state is faring? Well, as you know, we were part of the uh, lawsuit that had about 23 different states that were joined into Florida. Uh, district court opinion and of course it came out favorable to us and the other states that were parties uh, ruled that it was unconstitutional that has now been upheld by the 11th circuit which is our appellate court for the southeastern part of the united states uh, a number of other courts around the country have taken it up the most recent being in philadelphia a federal judge there likewise ruled that the uh, statute was unconstitutional ultimately this is going to have to be decided by the u.s supreme court and Unfortunately, sometimes it takes a long time to get there. As that's going through, we also have uh, other other cases that are going on. Immigration and how you crack down just like Alabama did, Arizona did, I think Oklahoma, Utah, Indiana, some of the other states as well. What is the latest update on the immigration law here in the state of Georgia? Well, as you know, it was challenged initially of, uh, by a uh, outside groups. The uh, federal judge in Atlanta ruled that uh, certain parts of it were to be put on hold pending further appeal. But the vast bulk of the statute, uh, he did not uh, rule unconstitutional and did not interfere with its uh, implementation. So we're going forward with those parts. Uh, certainly, uh, we think our statute was more carefully crafted than many other states. 
And I think that may be one of the reasons you did not see the United States Justice Department file suit against the state of Georgia's uh, uh, legislation. So we uh, we feel like we have tried to uh, thread the needle on that one, and but there will be appeals going forward on that. But the bulk of it, including the E-Verify, as you may know, mm-hmm. E-Verify has been upheld by the United States Supreme Court. And that is, uh, of course, a major part of the enforcement mechanism, and uh, it's proceeding forward. I know we just have about three more minutes because uh, I know you're a busy guy and you gotta catch a well, you gotta catch a bus in a few moments, right? That's right. All right, we'll, we'll make this very quick. Um, more statistics are coming out. No good economic news across the board. Poverty level in Georgia is the highest since 1983. The jobless rate jumps. We are fourth in the nation in foreclosures. This is a hand that you sort of walked into. What sort of steps is your administration looking at? Saying, is there so much the state can do without the federal government's input? Well, the federal government continues by regulation and otherwise to put pressure on businesses, and people are frightened. They don't know what to expect, and they're not going to make investments. But the good news is that revenue for the state of Georgia has continued to go up. Uh, we have been in the 8 to 9% increase over last year's levels, and um, that's, that's good news for the state. We finished uh, the fiscal year 2010, which ended the end of June. Uh, we were up about 7.8% over the previous fiscal year. And for the first several months now of uh, fiscal year 2012, which started the 1st of July, uh, the first two months we're up in that between 8 to 9% growth. So uh, the unemployment rate is still unacceptably high, but uh, revenues are beginning to trickle up. A final quick question I've got to ask for, then we'll let you scoot, because I know you want to come on down here to Valdosta and say hi to us. Um, as we're looking at all these things happening, my, my pet cause right now has to do with lottery tickets. I'm a firm believer that if you want to get more people to buy lottery tickets, what you do is this, and this would help the Hope uh, Scholarship and all the other fun stuff. Why, do, why are we taxing people? Why is the state collecting tax from lottery winnings? Is there any way we can just say, look, we don't want the money and we will get more in revenue generated by people buying more tickets if they know if you get $20 million, you got to pay the feds, but the state is sort of bowing out gracefully? Does that make sense? <laughs> well, it might be worth considering. I hadn't really thought about that one. Um, the feds are not going to back off on getting their share, of course. Sure. And, and that's the biggest part of it. But um, it's certainly something I'll bring up with our lottery. Yeah, commission. I'd appreciate it because it's like, you know, if, you, if it's a $20 million ticket, and they say $12 million after taxes. Look, it's a once-in-a-lifetime shot. They're never going to win it again. And, you know, look, if I win the lottery, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep investing in Georgia, going to pay off my house, hire some contractors, get a new car. All the money is going to stay right here. You're going to get it in the end anyway. And I think this would actually encourage more people to buy more lottery tickets and help that Hope Scholarship that I know that everybody wants to keep solid. That's right. We've got to keep it healthy, and uh, it's done a great job for our state, and we need to make sure the revenue continues. All right, Governor, I appreciate you coming on through, and uh, thanks so much. And I'll be kind to Amy Carter and the Southern uh, Delegation for a little while, all right? Okay. All right. You do that. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you checking in on the morning drive. That is uh, the Gubernatorator, Nathan Deal. Oh, you didn't think we were going to have him today, did you? Ha! We did.